the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit as we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, the eighth day of this Easter octave. We certainly want to give thanks to the folks at St. Patrick's who are going to offer a special Divine Mercy commemoration this on Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m. All of you are invited. Very much want to thank Deacon Pat Skelly for leading this Divine Mercy Prayer Service on behalf of the folks at the border town. As for us, I will continue offering these Masses as long as the Bishop's uh, dispensation is in effect. We want to make sure we take care of all of you online when possible. As we gather to celebrate these Easter mysteries, let us open our hearts to God's presence as we call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to his need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and I was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength encourages the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. 
The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark and the nails in his hands, and put my fingers into the nail harks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later the disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he looked and said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Bring your hand and put it to my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believed. Now Jesus did many other things in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During the sacred triduum, I had the opportunity to celebrate Confession Palooza over at St. Patrick's Church in Mements and St. Anne's. You know, I'm probably in the minority concerning this. I do know that on Good Friday, there's a tradition that the Holy Father usually sits in the confessional to hear the sins of members of the area. But for me, uh, the one thing I can do, based on the gifts and talents that God has given me in, in this ordination rite, God has given me the ability to forgive sins. If you forget men's sins, they are forgiven them. If you hold them bound, they are held bound. Jesus gave it to the apostles, who gave it to the bishops, who gave it to people like me. And I felt, I feel an honor, I feel a responsibility to offer these confessions whenever possible. There have been years in my priesthood where a couple times a year, three times a year, I would hear all-day confessions. On the Feast of John Vianney, I would hear them from 8 in the morning until midnight. 
In Advent and in Lent, I would focus on a 24-hour marathon confession to hear the confessions of anyone who wanted to come. And in those cases, people would come throughout the diocese and area because there was a great need for forgiveness in people who wanted their hearts cleansed. I noticed that uh, at St. Anne's and St. Pat's where I serve, people have been coming to me before Mass and after Mass to ask for God's love. Uh -huh. During the Holy Thursday service, I made a promise to the people of Moments that I would hear as many confessions as needed after the liturgy. And I was told there were probably more folks at our Holy Thursday Mass this year in the last couple decades. And it was apparent because I was in that confessional for a good hour, hour and a half, taking care of those who were in need. On Good Friday, there were folks that were coming to me after the outdoor stations of the cross. Padre, puede escuchar mi confesión. And I was thinking, I'm now doing sidewalk confessions. I'm now doing confessions prior to and after the Good Friday service. Yes, I know that a lot of priests won't do it. But for me, what God has given me, the ability to allow God and the community to work through me to forgive sins, I don't have a lot of time on this earth. And I want to do what is possible to offer that forgiveness to save as many souls as possible, to allow God to save as many souls as possible in the community through this particular sacrament. And that gives me hope. It gives me hope because if I can do this for others, I certainly hope and pray that God will do it for me. It also tells me there's a great deal of faith and hope and love in the communities that I serve. We call those the theological virtues, the three most important virtues that we have. But it also dawned on me in today's Gospel reading that what is the opposite of faith, hope, and love? Doubt, despair, and selfishness. Because we live in a world that wants to make us panic, that wants to make us despair, that wants to make us afraid, that wants us not to believe in what God wants to teach, but what the secular world wants to teach that their values are better than God's values. I very much believe in following the laws of the state, but not all the laws in the state are moral. Not all of them are going to get us to heaven. Follow the commandments. That's our second reading today. Follow the teachings of the commandments that God has given us. Make sure we love our God and love our neighbor, no matter who that neighbor is. Do not lose faith in Jesus. Have faith in God, in faith in me, for in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. You know, the reason why the first letter of John was written, the Gospel of John was written, most likely by the same author, was to combat a heresy called docetism in the first century that stated that God truly did not die on the cross. The first letter of John, the Gospel of John, makes it very clear that Jesus was incarnate. In fact, in the Masses I celebrate for the poor clares in the extraordinary form, every single Mass ends with the reading from the first chapter of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. A smaller prologue is offered in the first letter of John in the same way. We cannot lose hope. We cannot lose our faith or our love, this Christian sacrifice, that God has offered us. I was reflecting on the words of a Catholic author named Peter Kreeft. He wrote a book called Fundamentals of the Faith. I use that book with my university students. He talks about faith, hope, and love and their opposites, doubt, despair, and selfishness. He writes the following. It is appropriate for us to turn back to these basics of Christian life now because the society in which we live does not understand them. We live in a post-Christian world. Many of us are not sufficiently aware of that fact. Our modern world is, in fact, a clear countersign to these three virtues. Doubt, despair, and selfishness are the pillars of modern life, not faith, hope, and love. Our world sees the faith as naivete, hope as Pollyanna-styled wishful thinking, and charity as weakness. We see all around us a growing materialism, which is unbelief in practice, a rising suicide rate and depression, which is despair in practice, and a rising respectability for the me-first philosophy for which charity is a totally unintelligible alternative, 
a radical foolishness. It is therefore high time for us to go back to our spiritual basics, lest we sink into the dark waters that surround us, and despair into me tooism, lest our salt lose its saltness, and deserve only to be trodden underfoot, like rock salt thrown on snow or ice. Faith, hope, and love. That is what got us through Lent and brings us here on Divine Mercy Sunday to realize that God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And this Mass is our source and summit. We always have those moments like St. Thomas. We all do. Doubt, despair, selfishness. The Catholic Church is not about me. It's about all of us. The body of Christ coming together and proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us realize what Christ was willing to do for us. Let us give thanks for what he has taught us. Let us give hope that if we follow God's command, we will make it to the kingdom of heaven. And let us learn about that charity, about that sacrifice, about that love, saying the other person is more important than our lives ourselves. Because when we do that, when we embrace these great theological virtues, we will fall away from the season of Lent, and we will turn to the season of Easter perpetually, allowing that light to shine in our hearts and sharing that light with the people that we meet. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. We have not seen, but we still believe. So with confident faith, we bring our concerns to God. That unbelievers in the church may find a living sign in Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that nations rich and poor work together to unite the world's resources so that all may be fed and provided for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who do not believe may be drawn into the faith by Christian example. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that members of this community may be one in mind and heart in giving thanks to the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they may be comforted by God during their time of trial. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may find the promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions offered this last week, that they and their families may be blessed by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, plant your precious gift of faith 
deeper into our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness. We have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. And by dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly power with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for hope of well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those who have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the day before he was to suffer, 
He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of that blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. 
Can you stay? Qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Can you stay? Qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Can you stay? Qui tonis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we start passing through the weeks of Easter, when the weather becomes more accommodating, we will start celebrating our Mass outdoors, as requested by the peoples of the border towns. No worries, we will do whatever you tell us to do, because we are here to serve you. Over at St. Anne's, we're still taking a collection for our $6,000 concrete pads for our pavilion, and walkways from the street to the pavilion, for the sake of the seniors of our parish. We've had a lot of nice people that have made donations towards this cause, and for this we are most grateful. Over at St. Pat's, we are still working on uh, kitchen and bathroom facilities for our gymnasium. We had a nice parishioner who is uh, dedicated to cleaning our rectory and cleaning our church and cleaning our gymnasium, all for the glory of God. And there's so many other folks that have been like that. We are most grateful. I have committed myself to giving $6,000 uh, to the two parishes as part of my stewardship. Certainly, whatever you can do. We uh, just had a, a nice pew donation from one of our parishioners at St. Patrick's. We are still doing pew donations, and whatever you can do to support this online ministry, as long as the bishop's dispensation is in effect, we'll keep doing these Masses. Uh, I am here to serve you. Very much appreciative for all the folks who have done decorating and have done music and have helped out with the 11 individuals who received the sacraments on Easter weekend. Uh, very much uh, indebted to everyone in the parish for your support and your prayers. I also would like to thank Alicia Parkinson, who uh, was discharged from the hospital on Easter weekend, uh, to convalesce and to come back and to do all the things a secretary needs to do, both she and Mary Tolmer and uh, Artemio Ojeda, have been of great service to us at the parish. We are in the process of having our Thamio work both at St. Anne's and St. Patrick's with the loss of Jack Noonan. We are just trying to find a way to bridge the gap and our Thamio is like gold at our parish. We are so blessed to have him and you with us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, may he give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, whose by redeeming work you have received the gift of an everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. 
Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.